Well, I'm down here on the Hampshire Haven. Very, very, very windy. Uh, you can see in the car park I am. Basically the only car here. And I'm going to be trying for a car. I'm trying to catch a pike. I've just come down trying to catch a pike. I haven't fished it for years and years. Goodness how long I've got. It was that I fished it for pike. I don't really bother coming down anymore. I'm not just, it's a hunch, you know. But no cars in the car park. Possibly doesn't bode well. Uh, it's not flooded. I think so. It's up and pushing a little bit. Um, it's more the weather. Beautiful blue sky at the moment. Had a bit of rain yesterday. And um, I'm going to go upstream and just work my way down. All I've got is some manky old herrings and um, I think a few smelt and one mackerel. And then they say you can lure fish. It's the current time of uh, doing this 2021. Um, so I could throw some lures around if I run out of bait. Lose them in the weed beds and stuff like that. So I'm looking for one halfway decent fish. That's all I'm looking for. I'm not looking for numbers. I don't think I'm going to get that anymore down here. But uh, you never know. And that's the hope of fishing. Let's get cracking. So it's going to be windy in the mic. There's no way around that. I've come right up the top. The weir is up here. Used to fish here lots as a youngster. 14, 15 years old. Sort of cup of teeth on the barbel fishing down here on a float. That's all sort of done. Well, it was a long time ago, going 50 years ago, more, more than that, 60 years ago. Anyway, I digress. Uh, being winter, there's less weed here. But years ago, there's always used to be choked with, with weed. And pike like weed. It's too pacey. I can see that for pike in here, down there. But there's a slack. There's a side stream coming in there. So I'm going to have a few throws there. And then I'm going to chuck down here. But I think the herring, to be honest, is going to be right on the surface. So it could invariably be just what I call pocket fishing. You know, whereby I'm just looking to hold the bait in there for five, ten seconds, maybe twenty seconds. The current will then get it and whip it away. So I might be, I'm going to be mobile, moving through the swims all the time. Guys, I'm on. Got a pike on here, just up from that stream on the smelt. Looks like a jumper to me. I'm oh, feeling out. I've got the camera in my mouth. Not big fish, but he's not far off a 10, I'm guessing. There he is. Right, net time. I've got my vape throwing out, I can't move my mouth. Right. Let me get him in now for you. Is a really nice fish. I reckon he might go around about 12 pounds. Nicked in there. Wowee. That is a good start, is it not, folks? <laughs> it's windy. You probably won't get any of the talking, but great pike to catch on the Avon on a smelt that's about eight years old in the freezer. Makes it even better. And yeah, I got spiked by his tooth unhooking him. Here we go, what a beauty. So that one came from a very famous area. Always used to be Gershie the 30 up there when I was a youngster. At least one a year came out, well same fish probably twice. And I'm down from that. So what I was doing was throwing all my baits out. I left them in the cool box because I've got a lot of old baits in there and they're frozen solid. I put them in last night and they're still solid this morning. So a really good little cool box. And I've got here smelt, mackerel, and some North Sea herrings, kindly donated by one of our supporters. You might see, have seen the film where I drove and picked them up. So I was down in that slack over by those sort of old rush stems across there. 
in here occasionally you'll pick a fish up in here but generally I'm looking for the slightly slack see a pike doesn't want to be fighting that fast current all the time you want to be laying on the edge somewhere further upstream it was a straight narrow piece here I've got some curves can you see those curves in there even here look this cutaway it's made it sort of boily and swirly which is not the greatest uh, for fishing but you never know there could be a pike in there so obviously I've got to give this guy over here another bit of a cane in that stretch from the from the bush down to there there could be more than one in there just using very large VB singles you know the bait holder there hopefully these are thought about these smelt they look well, like nothing on earth and I, I, I got the rigor mortars in them so I like to work them a little bit like this just do that S shape a single hook right through the center there they've got to get dead straight make sure it's dead straight otherwise it's gonna spin especially in a river and then the other bait holder just there and I've had to put three swan shot on there just to get it down enough because they're not going to be on the surface like the summer they are going to be down in the water and about a 24 inch long wire trace I think it's 33 pounds or something more than enough for anything in England swimming around so let's get that back out all keen now all keen hopefully this one's thawed out could always be another pike over there I'm on 30 pound line believe it or not it's just my boat reel and my usual old pike with the white uh, the white kanji so I've got to go down here I might even go through with the smelt and spend 10 or 15 minutes here and then go to a herring she's got more flash because this side stream coming out here pouring out there's a demarcation line there if you like of uh, coloured water this is clearer and that's dirty and ironically I caught him in the dirty water so maybe a flashy herring might be even better now this I've been picked up by the speed there of the current so I'm sort of stuffed you will get the odd take there but just tweak it and you can always hold it in the current tweaking it if you're in a, a nice steady spot wow that's a nice fish to catch I had a sort of mental, a mental figure of about eight pounds. That's even better. See, I've, got, oh, I've still got ice in there, that's a problem. My thought I should have took a, a half a dozen baits last night. Well, I just had another one about two pounds, come right down the bottom where the car park is here. Um, but it's tough going, I've got to say it's tough going. I've gone right round the bend there, which is, uh, again, used to be called 20 to 30 pound corner over there years ago in there. there's an inlet used to go down it's all fallen in the water now and gone down there's never any island here that was just a clean gravel bar that's now choked with uh, bushes and rubbish it's all conglomerated there and built up to alter the river totally but there's a nice pool along here i'm just going to give this a go and this is exactly where that one is only about two pounds so i didn't bother filming it um and it took a smelt you can't believe that it just it shows you how aggressive i just need to find an aggressive larger one but i tried up there over there nothing but there's a nice big slack here i'm amazed there's nothing here but don't get me wrong this must be absolutely hammered because it's close to the car park so i won't hold too much uh, uh time here you know i'm going to move on but it's worth half a dozen casts here but when it was laying on the bottom the pot i saw the pipe follow the uh, bait in so i just opened the bail on dropped the uh, bait on the bottom and I could see the pike come up and as I twitched it, he grabbed it and then spat it out. I waited, twitched it again, he spat it out and then moved off. I guess it was about four pounder, not very big. But would have been a bit of action. Is that a pickup? No, that's a snag. Look, there could be pike under there, but it could also be branches under there. So you've got to be careful. Definitely doesn't seem to be much on the feed though. Well, pretty well water whacked. I've had five takes, only got the two. So pretty disappointing really. Sort of not surprised, it's not what it was years ago when you know you had lots of pike. But listen, I can't grumble with one 12 pounder. So I think I'm gonna call it quits. I looked at this little ditch, which is ditch. 45, 50 years ago, I, I kid you not, this was from over there. Well, you can see the width of the bank, how it's all grown in. This was at least twice the size across here of this. Possibly the same flow, who knows. 
we used to catch chub to four pounds all the way down this ditch years ago. It was like our banker. We go chub fishing up on the main river and then come down here. Weird just to see it. Well, I'd say half the size. I'd say it is half the size of what it was. So what I did think about, because I froze those baits, I forgot to open like half a dozen up. You need that suppleness. You need to get rid of that rig of mortars. Now, one way you can do that is by deboning. Now, really, nobody does that in the UK. It's a sort of foreign thing. And I do have a proper deboning tool. And I believe we can make a deboner and you take the backbone out. We used to do it for wahoo, sailfish, anything you need a swimming bait, downrigger fishing for Karen BC, which is the fashion name is GT now, but it's Karen BC, Giant Trevally Jack is what it was. And um, you needed a swimming bait and you had to make it supple. So maybe, I'm not saying that's why I haven't had a good day's fishing, I've had, you know, done okay, but struggle really. Um, I can make that from a piece of pipe, so probably go back to the workshop now and I'm gonna put something else up as well might be another fishy one, might be something random like I normally put up. It's a tip, it's a tip. Right, I'm going to call it quits, get in the car, sit in the traffic queues and warm up. So I am back in, well, by the attire, it's not the relative warmth of the workshop, it's just the totally awesome workshop. I did say I was going to show you a deboning tool. This is indeed, because I used to do a lot of big game fishing, a deboning tool, okay? Now, years ago, we used to have to, this is a trolling for marlin, sailfish, wahoo, kingfish, uh, giant trevally jacks, whatever, with a swimming bait, not a surface skipping bait. I'm sure some of you have seen the big game boats where they have the big arms, what's called outriggers, and they clip all the baits out, you know, space it all out, and you have a big spread you're dragging behind the boat. Now, you can have skipping baits, you can have lures, but sometimes those predators only want to hit a fish, a real fish bait, a dead bait, under the water. The big thing is you're moving, aren't you? Think of it like a river. You're moving along so you've got that flow. Therefore, you're going to get baits that spin and twist, and that's no good. It twists your line up. More important, the big game fish won't take your bait when it's spinning. So you want it tracking dead straight. Now, if you can imagine a soft rubbery one like a shad tail you've got it does this and it? it swims you know brrr, lovely lovely yes but it's got no backbone has it it's a piece of latex or rubber a rigid body of a fish has a skeletal format to it so it supports it all so it's rigid so you can do what i did you know and just figure of a and s shape a bait if it's frozen um or if it's stiff it's got rigor mortis just to soften it up to get a bit of movement to it I'm talking pike fishing in rivers now. You'll get more movement if you remove the backbone with one of these. So, at the end of that is like a little angle cut blade. You go, I'm gonna do this to myself. I'm gonna take my own backbone out. Think of sword swallows. Hang on. That's the principle of it is you put this down inside the fish, you twist and cut the backbone out, you just do a tweak down to cut it off at the tail end, you bring it out, and to get rid of the gunk inside, you have a stick or, you know, like this piece of wood, pretty rubber handle, to push the guts, as it were, out. That therefore hasn't damaged the bait too much, it's taken the backbone out. This is gonna be a bit big for those baits I've got, but, do you know this come from America? Because I, as I say, I did loads of bait rigging, swimming mullet, chin red, chin rig mullet, uh, you, all the different ballyhoos, all the different types of baits. I've done most of them, bonitos, everything. We should be able to make the same thing out of a bit of old tubing that's probably that end. As you can see, it's much smaller to go on a much smaller spine. See, it's not half the size, probably a third less, I guess. So I've got to cut a V in it, right? And then I've got to put a little cutting edge on that V. So let's get that done. Job done there. Save it. You never know when you want a piece of tubing. Like I do now. I'm going to cut a V in that. Probably using a smaller hacksaw with finer teeth.
can see it's got that sharp edge on it. I'm just going to file that round there. Now, pike fishing generally, cold weather, baits, wet, wet and cold, cold fingers, not good. That's metal, add that together with a temperature drop. So I'll need a little handle here. I'm either going to put a wood one or is there anything knocking around I've got that I can use? Bear with me, I'll have a search around the workshop. So oh, what I've come across is an old butt cap there because you're going to need a bit of power to push to cut down that backbone. I've got some good old duct tape, you can't beat it. I'm going to pack out that tube so it just pinches onto this um, butt cap which I just dropped and has rolled God knows where. So what I do is take that off, split it, split it again and start packing the end of this. Now if you want a big space filler, I find if you crinkle it, the first one, and go backwards and forwards like this, it fills up, you, know, you just crush it all up, do it nice and tight, it, it, it helps pack that space out so you don't use miles of it. Yes, I've got it by twisting it, twisting it, twisting it. That is, that, that's on there, but of course, I've got to put this on a piece of wood. I've only done this just to push to show you now. So this will be on a piece of dowel so it goes through the middle to push the guts out. This is a one-off. I'm doing this just a one-off. So what I would do when I've done it to show you, take it off. I then do like the same as this one, put it on a piece of dowel that goes internally and I can clean that tube out. I'm only doing this just to show you how the tube works. Right, I've got one mackerel, I've got one herring here. It's going to get messy, I know. Here's the herring. Here's the mackerel from yesterday's pike fishing trip. For those who are just having their breakfast, my apologies. Hopefully it's not having a haddock or something for breakfast. So there we go. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to push the tube inside this one's mouth. Like this go into the backbone and let me just show you just to give you an idea here's a mackerel right you can see look it's, it, it's been in the fridge it's not frozen it's fairly bendy isn't it but it's still what I would call relatively rigid the herring most certainly so that is I can swing it from side to side like this and it's still not much movement in it so let's see if we can get the backbone out I'm probably so gonna wish I hadn't started this so we're going to go in here, now this is sharp, don't forget I've sharpened the end of it haven't I? I've got to get over the backbone there and I'm just going to try and cut my way down the tube of the backbone. You should be able to feel it sort of pop over the bones. Obviously the more you do this the more you get used to doing it. And then when you get to the end, I'm still going down it, just give it an occasional turn just to cut it there. It is bone, don't forget. There we go, nearly at the bottom. I don't want to come out at the bottom. Well, I'm going to go, I can just feel it here. So I want it fairly close to the tail. Then I'm just going to so I'm going to do a twist and a snap and you might be able to see all the meats come out there obviously I've done it this once just so I could push that would normally have the tube in it that can push it all out that is now let me hold it up for you so now we have a mackerel that look I could virtually bend double as you can see there so you can imagine the movement I would get in the water from this more of if you look if I do that, it's a sort of more of a swimming motion and it's a lot softer. Let's see what we can do with the herring. Now, you probably won't hear the clicking noise as this, this blade here twists and cuts through the backbone. It's more of a sensation you can feel it. It's a bit harder to get through the herring's jaw. But once I get to the end, there we go, it should all be coming out. 
Now let's have a look at this one and see what it's like. I can tell already it's really pretty supple. Here's Mr. Herry. And look at this. That's how, if you can imagine that going through the water, that's what you see at the back when we're trolling for marlin, sailfish, wahoo, kingfish, that sort of thing, Spanish mackerel. It's that you want. It's that almost shad like movement. And that, again, the nose can touch the tail. Now, there is a way, I won't do it on this one because this is for pike fishing just lobbing out on rivers, but you can imagine the current in the river is going to make that swim a lot more. It's just a tip, take it or leave it. They do it all the time trolling big game fishing with baits like this. I just think it's something different and you can, obviously, I can show you on another one if you wanted. How do you sew a little saddle over this, a bridle mount to put a single hook in if you wanted. It's just a different way. You can also put a split in that tail to make the tail come apart. It's very refined. This one's got freezer burn, you can see, so I can't do it with this one. And these baits aren't great. They've been pike fishing all day yesterday and they've thawed out. But I kept them in the fridge overnight to show you. But that one worked really well. So, here is the professional one. Oh, look, the gunk coming out of that. Oh, yucky. You can see you push all the guts out with that and flush it out and wash it. This one, I've taken the bung off. There's the guts in the end. There's the guts here. So, well, it's not the guts, it's the backbone, as you can see there. So all I do is get something. Oh, haven't got anything small enough. I haven't found the piece of wood to fit that yet. Push it all out, flush it out, and put this on the end of your wood uh, plunger. I hope that's of interest to you. One other thing I've got here. If you remember in a previous one I was dipping my old bashed up lures in uh, some paint. They've now dried and all you've got to do if you want to put an eye on them, get yourself some sort of enamel paint, whatever colour you want. And I use a nail, I don't use a brush, and then I can just dip like this. Just let it dip on one side. You let one side dry first. And then when that's dry, you turn it over and let the other side. How easy is that there? Whether it makes any difference or not, I don't know. But there you go. I forgot to put it in the last one because I was letting the paint dry. But if your eyes on your lures, easy to do. Another workshop wonder. So what's this all about? I'm laying in bed this morning. I said to the wife, I think I might mow the lawn. Might be the last cut of the winter. She said you won't be mowing anything. Excuse me. What is all this white stuff about? Now, as I'm doing this, it's still November. It's the end of November. I can't remember. It must be 20 years since I've seen snow in November. Is it going to be a bad year, a cold year? I don't know, like 1963. Who remembers 1963? I know I do. 1963, we had about 30 inches to three feet of snow for two months, sub-zero. I think the Thames froze, the sea froze. Well, this is no good. My well, things are frozen already. I have one job to do. It's this in the garage. Because I don't feel I'd be out here without a fire. Oh, I hate the cold. Rolled on April. Well, hopefully that gives you guys some idea. It is for not long distance power casting, super power, big pit casting, nine miles. It's going to break up because you've just taken out the backbone, which is the rigidity factor in it. It is for lobbing across the river and letting the current make that tail and body movement snake and swim naturally. Anyway, more jobs. I can think of, <laughs> I have no shortage of thinking up jobs, believe me. But what I did buy was something I could use for a bit of bushcraft bonfire and I'm so pleased. It gives me something to do. It works. Check it out. And it came from a piece of junk. A throwaway. Right, just in the workshop I got, I think I mentioned, I mentioned it before. Loads of jobs, loads of junk, loads of stuff being going on here. Painting. I won't be any painting now, I'll be freezing. Anyway, I had to throw my daughter's, or change my daughter's oven. It's probably just a thermostat that we've changed anyway. And I've seen these. And I'm thinking, 
hang on, I might get this type of thing for cooking, you know, the folding ones. And I'm wondering if I can cut those apart in some way, shape or form and make one over the top. They look like they're all stainless, the stainless grills out of the oven. And then maybe cut this one to make two folding legs at an angle. I've got to think about it, which is obviously in this cold weather the brain is functioning at a far less capacity than normal. Fairly no, low anyway. So, get some gloves on and uh, have a go at this. I've got to watch this because I cannot, or, and the wife can fall to fall over here. So I've got some of this stuff left over called Easy Mount. I'm going to bung some of that down because I just do not need to slip over. Well, I absolutely hate the winter. I know some people say, oh, it's lovely embracing and fresh out there. It's just cold. I don't get it. Right, let's take a look at this thing. It looks like there's so many junky jobs. That looks like that's fine as it is. Do I take a crisscross one like this? No. I think it's going to be. Cut this in half, and that will give me my sort of legs like this somehow. But I want to be—I want to sort of have them hinged, because I want to be able to rest them if I can. I think the thing to do, being as easy, both exactly the same, is cut one in half. You've got these little racks, ridges at the back to stop you pushing plates over the back. And yeah, but I think I can, I can probably twist that one off with a bit of luck. Fatigue it. It's gone. So that's off. So that leaves me with just two straight legs. Well, I've already got two straight legs. Graham, what are you talking about? I'm thinking maybe. I want this as you can see there up inside there <clears throat> make that my hinge point but I might have to bend I'm have to take one two three of these out to just to be able to bend that inwards to make it sort of fit inside there it's not going to go outside I suppose it could go outside I just feel inside might make it you know a bit to uh, a bit of tension on there so the best thing to do is snip these out one by one. There's actually a fair to middling chance that this might actually work.
maybe making hard work of this because I was going to make little circles to wind around there so they could be folded on and off. I'm looking at it and thinking the distance there that's not far away from what I call a split ring and I've got some old key split rings. I wonder if that might be the way to do it. I'm going to go and get some. Good excuse for a refuel as well. They would actually fold up like that, and if you wanted, you could put it on a backpack, couldn't you? So it's mobile. I'm well, well pleased with that, guys. Look at that. Well pleased with that. Now, that's as just as good an excuse as I've ever wanted to actually go. Actually, I'll put it over there, might put a little lock of it. Um, and light a fire down the bottom. Before I go down there, I don't know that you other people have ever had that with a screwdriver where uh, you probably forced a screw or something. So I don't know, should I be filing that off or should I be grinding it off? I think I'll try with the grinder first. Tell you what, it's good enough. Good enough for the screwdrivers for me. And then I'm going to touch that with a file, just get a little bit of bevel on it there. So, it's another job. See how easily I get sidetracked when I get bored. Let's get out and get this fire going, it's way more interesting. One of the downsides of liking all the trees, and we've got a lot of different trees down here, is the leaves come down. But we had a big northerly storm, and it blew them really sort of off our trees outside our boundary. So we've got a monumental amount of leaves here. We literally, each year, we reckon two or three tons of leaves we get rid of. And they all obviously mulch down. We don't use them as mulch, they just rot down. So while I'm actually waiting for that fire to burn down, because I'm notorious for cooking over flame, and you should be cooking over coals, really. So I've got to let that burn down. But I'll tell you what is holding up very well. It's this. This is a miniature roundhouse. Mini roundhouse for Mike's daughter, Eve. Obviously, she won't be appearing in it with temperatures like this. But I'll tell you what, it's, 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 it will hold together for years. If you want to see the actual build of it, it's on Mike's channel, TA Outdoors. Just look up. There's the gap. Look up here, Michael put a link up, and you can watch it individually, or you know, you can watch the full build in one go. Quite a bit of work doing it. You'd think, being small, that there's not much work, but it's actually the same principle of making it and doing the, um, the clay around the edge. Um, it's the same amount of work, it's just the volume. It's the same principle as building the big roundhouse that Mike built on his channel. So we get blasted by the wind here obviously being open across those fields there. But as you can see, all of this layer is all holding up here. This is, ouch, it's cold grim. It's absolutely rock solid. You can see how they've found these things been for hundreds of years. All you've got to do is just go around the edges, re-tap any that have slipped down like this, tidy it all up, and in here, We've noticed absolutely bone dry. I'm amazed a bird hasn't gone up in there uh, and made a nest. <coughs> I don't have a problem if it does. But what we do notice in here, in the summer, this is cool. It stays cooler. And in the winter, like now, 
as soon as I move in here, the temperature is totally different. It's definitely, you're out of the wind, you're out of the cold. So this one is a real bit of fun to be played with in the summer or even on a mild day because I've got this fire here. I can't wait to get cooking on my new patented grill. And over here, <clears throat> now that's burning down, that's getting close to cooking time. Over here you've got the, wow, the giant pallet with a porch build. Again, that's featured on my channel. And if you want to see what this one was like being built individually or in full, check up here, Mike, I'll put a link up, you can watch that. Listen, it's all something to watch during the winter when it's cold and nasty outside. This is nearly ready to take my new fully patented oven stroke portable camping bushcraft grill. And I am going to cook on it. Rephrase, I'm going to attempt to cook on it. Now if you don't want to get, if you've got bacon, I'm going to do a bacon and egg sandwich roll, sorry. If you don't want it all to crinkle up, if you get a pair of scissors, especially ones with quite a bit of rind on them, this is a smoked back baking rasher. It's just to snip the edges. My mum used to do this. Like this. And that stops it all bending and that way it should cook pretty evenly. As you could do it with a knife if you're bushcrafting out there. Got a lot of bacon to eat, guys. The wife's out, she's up in London with her friends. I think. Just like this. That looks hot enough. And then in we go with this. That's hot. Now, if I want that to go down lower, let's pull this back. If I want this to go down lower, I'm just gonna put a different bend on there. I could probably do it if I was out in the woods bushcrafting and just bend it back at a lower angle. But the idea is to get a good fire going. As you can see, that's gonna cook there, no problem at all. And I've got plenty of space to put other stuff on as well. I'm gonna be doing some of that dessert there. So let's get that on there. A bit wobbly, that one. I'm going to over this side warm. Oh yes, it's winter. I'm going to call it some leftover mold wine, but it won't be left over very long. Lovely jubbly. Gonna pop it up with a little bit of Worcester sauce. Why not?
That is something off with his head. My gran used to cook years ago when she's trying to get us kids to eat more fruit. She would do. Who can think of what I'm going to be doing? I've got the butter on the go. Flambe banana. And that is, I believe, brings the sugars out in it. Here we go. Bushcraft special, flambe banana. So they're just cooking there, what I've done, because it's so cold, I've got some honey I'm going to put on there. When you get to the bottom end of the tub sometimes, you know, the jar, it gets a bit soft, so I'm just carefully just softening the honey up in there, just warming it, so it would actually pour, because it goes pretty solid in the cold weather. Well, they're done now. I've, got, I've taken the grill away because I don't want to build the fire up again and it's too hot for me to bend the legs. Just warming up the last of the uh, mulled wine and now I'm going to have the uh, bananas. Perfect. Just needs a drizzle of honey. Well, okay, uh, it was a bit more than a drizzle, Graham. There we go, so he's wasting that jar of honey. And that is going to be a serious sugar rush. This is what I call eating in the outdoors. And do you know, it's all fun and hot. Mmm. That's so sweet, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I can almost feel my teeth rotting as I, each bite goes in. Mm. I'll be going all hyperactive all this sugar now. Well, thanks for joining us. This was a bit of fun, this one. Bit of work in the garage. The snow's now gone. There'll be more coming. I, I, when it hangs about like that, it's normally more coming. So I'm just going to polish off this mulled wine and then sort of plan the next fishing trip or the next work job or whatever. Uh, well pleased with that um, little grill I made. As you see, it all works. And it just saves throwing something away, doesn't it? I just hate throwing things away when you can uh, get something out of it. See you guys in the next one, whether it be fishing, work, workshop, garage, outside, bushcraft, who knows? I don't even know myself. Cheers. Mm -hmm.